Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like you have around the pulse of uh, a lot what's going on in the community. And uh, how long have you been alderman? Because I think it would probably take a lot of time to get that kind of relationship going with the community that you have. Well, I've been alderman since 1999, and uh, I feel very fortunate and lucky to serve the, the people of my 10th ward. And as you said, you're a resident. I'm a resident, too. My family is located here. Um, not like some other positions where you don't have to be a resident of the community in which you live. A uh, CEO of a major corporation may have that corporation located in a certain city, but may live elsewhere. I feel by having to live in the community in which we represent, we take it more at heart, and we feel more compassionate, more passionate about representing those people because it's the neighborhood in which you live. Well, being that it was so long ago that <laughs> you came, on to, came into office, what have you felt uh, back then your opinion of how the job would be as opposed to how it is for you today? Well, I, I enjoy it, and every day is, uh, is different. It's challenging. Um, people are not satisfied, which they shouldn't be. Um, this is their life, this is their neighborhood, and they need to hold everyone responsible. First and foremost, I believe themselves, uh, be participatory in the events and activities of your community, but also the elected officials. It's a lot more work than people give it credit for. Uh, it's very demanding, and at times it can be personal, and I don't think that's uh, necessarily correct. Um, it's not necessarily a business, but people oftentimes take out too much on their elected officials. Uh, I'm not soft, but um, I think we need to realize that we can need to continue to work together and through a coalition resolve our problems. Right. So well, over that amount of uh, the time that you've been alderman of the 10th Ward, what are some of the accomplishments that you feel that you would like to, to, to discuss and, and how you felt about getting those things done and, and where we're going possibly in the future? Well, I think uh, just the coalition that I mentioned, the, the vastness of the ward uh, demonstrates the challenges that we have just communicating, even this technical age when we have so many mediums. But I think we've done a very effective job at bringing all the neighborhoods together. Uh, I had succeeded um, an alderman who was in there for several years, and uh, people were looking for change, and it was a great time for me to come in office and really bring the neighborhood together. We've done that. Uh, we have great relationships in all the neighborhoods. Uh, people are familiar with us. We attend many meetings, from block club meetings um, to social service programs. Uh, we've sponsored Back to School Fest. But we've done a lot in the, in the neighborhood, and we've always focused on three major issues, uh, crime, education, and economic development. Uh, unfortunately, in the last year or two, we've seen more challenges with the jobs, but we've done great things in order to uh, stabilize our neighborhood, including working closely with the Ford Motor Company to bring 1,200 new good-paying jobs to the neighborhood. And we've also... Uh, created other opportunities for local people to be hired at uh, retail shops like Pete's Market, which is a great asset in the community, a major supermarket that employs 95% of their employees from the neighborhood. So it's a, it's a great way to give back to the community. It's a great way to keep the neighborhood active and employed so that they can sustain for their families. And just to expound a bit on the, the fact that you mentioned the Ford plant, yeah. how did you as the alderman, not only as the person who holds that position, but as a community resident and a person who hears the concerns of the community, how did you go about facilitating that opportunity to come back to our neighborhood? Well, you know, that, that's a great question. Uh, among other things, uh, first of all, I'm familiar with what the Ford plant does. You know, I grew up in the Hegwish community and uh, actually worked in there for some one summer. Uh, my father and I worked in there. And uh, I pride myself in being familiar with what's happening in the neighborhood. I try to keep in contact with them. So um, I think specifically what we did was uh, the mayor, myself, uh, the governor, we met down with the Ford representatives and really listened to what their needs were. And they had asked us for support, financial and otherwise, and the city really came together to create a very uh, special package to keep Ford in the city of Chicago and to allow for them to expand. So we put together a very um, rich financial incentive program, uh, which included cleaning up some environmentally contaminated property. Uh, we provided assistance in constructing roads, and this was all at the, the taxpayer's expense, which in turn created those 1,200 jobs and 1,000 other jobs beside that and reinvigorated the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's not counting the, the various spillovers, like um, the real estate taxes that Ford generates, the sales taxes. And their employees, they have to go out to eat where they contribute to the economy in the neighborhood. Uh, they drive their vehicles, so they're purchasing vehicles, probably Fords, and they're spending their money in the neighborhood, which adds vibrancy to the neighborhood, too. Those are a few examples of how we've worked with Ford in particular. Now you mentioned the taxpayers' dollars going into bringing some of these yeah. options to the community. How do you go about doing it? How does the office do that? I've heard there's a magic word out there. It's called TIF. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can explain a little bit about what a TIF actually is and sure. how we use it in the community. Well, TIF, T-I-F, is uh, rec uh, st stands for Tax Increment Financing. And uh, a real buzzword these days, but TIF is simply... Um, People pay property taxes, whether it's residential or industrial or commercial. What a TIF does is, working through the state and the county, the city identify an area that uh, is eligible for TIF designation. And it may be an area where there's blight, uh, lack of development, 
lack of investment, vacant properties, and through that approval process, it kind of sets a baseline of all the property taxes that were received. So if you can imagine that uh, day one, uh, certain areas were gener was generating a million dollars in real estate taxes. After we implement the TIF, the next year it's generating 1.5 million. That half a million dollars in newly created taxes goes into a separate pot. It's not a new tax in terms of an additional tax, it's just a newly created tax or a newly generated tax. Uh, that pot of money can be used for anything from job training to demolition uh, to public improvements um, to infrastructure like new libraries, new parks, and new police stations. Uh, and we've used a lot of it, quite honestly, to improve our business districts and our residential districts. Some of the TIFs we have, we've uh, improved the housing stock, in particular in the South Chicago community, giving $12,500 to individual property owners to improve the, the windows, the doors, the lighting on those properties. And the same is true with the business district. We've done that to enhance the business district to allow for it to remain vibrant.